皆様、本日は国際防災の日記念ウェビナー、防災の現在地とこれから、SDGs 気候変動の視点と日本のリーダーシップに参加いただきましてありがとうございます。SDGs Climate Change Perspectives and Japan Leadership。And I am Tomiko Ichikawa, Director General of JIIA. And the webinar is hosting、uh, this with the UNIC Tokyo and the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And I would like to thank、uh, the co sponsors and all the panelists and everyone involved. Some of the audience may have participated. In the webinar that was held in April of this year, and our institute held it with the UN Information Center and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and it dealt with universal health coverage SDGs and the role of the United Nations. The webinar today is about an issue that is familiar to us and how the United Nations and Japanese diplomacy is involved and in trying to promote the international cooperation. It's the second webinar, and、uh, this、uh, disaster management has to do with October 13th, the International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction.、Uh, disaster management is a familiar issue in our daily lives, and its importance is gaining in the promotion of climate change. And、uh, Japan has long experience in this field. We have accumulated knowledge and experience. And disaster management is an important theme for Japan's diplomacy and economic cooperation. Also, in this field, and、uh, as we will be explaining, Uh, there is international cooperation, which is actively being promoted、uh, mainly by the United Nations, and these activities are closely related to the SDGs. Today, as the keynote speaker,、um, as a person I respect,、uh, we have the special representative of the UN Secretary General for Disaster Risk Reduction and head of the UN Office for DRR, Ms. Mami Mistori. And after the keynote,、uh, there will be discussion by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Diplomatic Corps, the municipalities, and experts. I hope that the webinar today will help to deepen your understanding with regards to international cooperation surrounding disaster management as well as the role to be played by Japan. So, without further ado, we'd like to start the webinar. And first of all, We would like to have the keynote speech Building Global Resilience, the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, Achievement of the SDGs, and Expectations for Japan. Under this title, we will hear from Ms. Mami Mistori, who I have just introduced, the Special Representative of the UN Secretary General for Disaster Risk Reduction and the head of UNDRR. Ms. Mistori, please. Thank you for introduction, Dr. Ichikawa. On this occasion of jointly sponsored webinars, I'd like to express my heart appreciation to all those that are concerned in preparing for this webinar. Ten years have passed since a great East Japan earthquake. I'd like to share with you my heartfelt condolences to those people、uh, that、uh, became victims of this disaster.、Uh, the, the past. 18 months,、uh, we have come to realize the importance of working on disaster preparedness due to the、uh, COVID、uh, pandemic and disasters related to climate change. First, at the outset, to commemorate October 13th, that is International Day of Disaster Reduction. UN Secretary General Guterres came up with the following message to meet the cascading challenges of the 21st century and safeguard the lives, health, and livelihoods of all people. We must reduce systemic risks. Building resilience to climate change and reducing disaster risk and losses is vital to save lives and livelihoods, eradicate poverty and hunger, and achieve the sustainable development goals. 
effective risk reduction relies on international cooperation and global solidarity. And it is about dramatically increasing funding and support for climate change adaptation and resilience building and delivering on the Sendai framework. The pandemic due to COVID-19 is uh, the disaster caused by biological hazard that is included in Sendai framework. It started from health damage starting in China and military that developed into pandemic that produced a wide range of uh, societal and economic uh, damage, which is exactly the systemic risk that UN Secretary General mentioned. That is reflected in the, uh, the minus 3% uh, growth rate, that is contraction of 3% of a global economy, according to IMF, and at micro level that resulted in exacerbation of poverty, loss of employment, loss of education opportunities, increased the probability of mortality due to the diseases other than COVID-19, the increased abuse of um, female and children and increase in societal attempts or suicide. And in view of such complex uh, disasters, we have to consider the Sendai framework implementation with a strong commitment and actions uh, with uh, the uh, preparation uh, for uh, reducing disaster risk uh, since we have to survive in this age and yet it is yet to be translated into actual actions. But since the adoption of Sendai framework in 2015, every year on the occasion of IDDR, the Sendai 7 campaign was uh, deployed, and that is to focus on one of the uh, global uh, seven global targets. And this year, it is uh, to substantially increase international cooperation to developing countries, developing countries, especially LDCs and uh, small island nations don't have sufficient funding domestically for disaster risk reduction, and therefore, uh, there is a strong need for international cooperation focusing on disaster risk reduction and disaster preparedness. And therefore, uh, the UNDOR uh, came up with a report issued on October 13th. According to that, uh, the out of uh, the investment made into uh, for the development aid, the funding to reduce the disaster risk is only 50% out of $100. Uh, if we take a closer look, the from 2010 to 2019, out of 133.3 billion US dollars, uh, the disaster related uh, funding uh, spending was 11% of total ODA, but most of them are after uh, the disaster as a measures response and only 5.5 billion was spent for uh, the disaster risk reduction and preparation. Why is that? That is because once disaster strikes uh, somewhere, and then uh, the disaster response, recovery, and reconstruction efforts are unavoidable, and yet the disaster preparedness to increase resilience is still viewed as a cost, but it is not the cost. Rather, it is for securing the resilience and safety in the future. Therefore, it should be viewed as an investment. Now, by changing a uh, point of view, and in fact, that is reflected in the climate emergency that we're experiencing today. Like COVID-19, this is a uh, global phenomenon. In Japan, we also suffered a wide range of natural disasters uh, that are related to climate change and also in Europe as well the extremely high temperature, the flooding, and other disasters were experienced. And uh, the point is that they were not the medium-term disasters. And when the, uh, the 10, uh, 20 years are compared uh, between 2000 and 2019, we realize that uh, the situation is uh, drastically different. And in fact, uh, the, 
we see that the number of mortality has been reduced uh, thanks to education. Yet, uh, the and that is thanks to the education uh, that was uh, implemented. And when we compare the uh, past 20 years and 2020, we see the uh, increased frequency of flood and torrential rain or storm. And as you see here, flooding, torrential rain, and drought resulted in the huge economic loss as well as a number of people affected that are uh, quite unprecedented. And what is most important is that the statistics that we have is far from reality. For instance, Japan, the Americas, Europe suffered a serious heat wave while Australia, Africa, Americas, Europe, Europe have suffered a serious draft, and yet the total picture is yet to be fully grasped. In the case of developed nations, the number of deaths uh, could be uh, investigated by referring to death certificate data, but in the case of developing countries, that is not. And economic loss due to the heat wave is not properly reflected in the statistics compared to actual damage. And in fact, Nothing impedes the development efforts than disasters. The LDCs that finally graduated from the status is back to that status again due to disasters, or in the case of the mid-income nations, when the uh, damage is uh, more than doubled than GDP, and they cannot gain the concessional international cooperation. And also in the case of uh, developed nations as well, as in the case of a great East Japan earthquake, a tsunami, the depopulation and aging society are hardly a hard hit at the time of uh, major disasters. And because most of them are related to climate change, we have to consider how we can alleviate the risks coming from climate change and stop damage generated from that. Otherwise, SDGs and sustainable development goals are hard to be achieved as measures to reduce the risks coming from disasters. A sand dive framework was established together with a Paris Agreement for Climate Change and SDGs. They have to be implemented in unity. In other words, there shouldn't be efforts uh, that are separated by silos. And the COP26 in uh, Glasgow in November, this is going to be extremely important. The further reduction of GHG, that is uh, the one of the important items on the agenda. But together with that, climate adaptation, increase the resilience and increasing international cooperation to that effect are considered to be urgent uh, the, the challenges together with the reduction of greenhouse gas and in view of such a huge uh, amount of uh, challenges, I'd like to share with you the roles and missions of UNDRR. From 1990 for 10 years, uh, that was uh, defined as International Decade for Disaster Reduction. And ever since, uh, three disaster-related conferences all took place in Japan. And then four years after Great East Japan Earthquake in 2015, all the member states of the UN adopted the Sendai framework from 2015 to 2030. A mission is to establish a resilient community that is safer by promoting the efforts and activities related to disaster preparedness and disaster risk reduction and promote discussion through hosting international conferences. And also for implementation of Sendai framework, we are here to support all the stakeholders and at the same time monitor the progress of uh, such efforts. And Sendai framework consists of four primary activities. And when I came to this post uh, about three years ago, I received a repeated briefing on those four priorities and I came to realize that those four priorities for action are well developed. First comes understanding disaster risk. Without understanding the risk around you, you cannot uh, respond it properly. 
Next, uh, strengthening disaster risk governance to manage disaster risk, investing in disaster risk reduction for resilience, and enhancing disaster preparedness for effective response, and to build back better in recovery, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. And uh, build back better. It is now a phrase that is commonly used in conjunction with COVID-19, but this originally came from the uh, disaster response. Amid the COVID, there are two uh, indicators uh, that we need to look at. And that is uh, with regards to the risk governance enhancement, what does it mean? Uh, at the basis is that there is uh, a strategy or plan. And based on that, uh, this, there needs to be a structure to implement and also uh, budgets. And uh, it is necessary to clarify the central and local government roles. And it, it should not be that uh, one department of the administration takes uh, a charge, but rather it should be uh, for the entire government and also the private sector citizens groups all the stakeholders' uh, voice needs to be reflected and all the actors given a role. And uh, those uh, that are vulnerable to disasters, their needs need to be clearly reflected. That is, in other words, uh, the reinforcement of disaster governance. And also, uh, with regards to the four priorities, uh, there's a Oh, to evaluate uh, seven targets that are prepared. And the first four is for reduction, that is mortality, and uh, also uh, number of affected people, uh, economic loss, uh, damage to critical infrastructure, and disruption of basic services, and also. Uh, there are other three uh, items, that is, uh, increase the number of countries with national and local disaster risk reduction strategies, and also uh, enhancing the international cooperation to the developing countries, and finally, increasing the availability of and access to multi-hazard early warning systems. And uh, these are the seven global targets. And six years have passed since the adoption of the Sendai framework. And as I have said earlier, right now, uh, the pandemic is ongoing. If you exclude uh, the death due to the pandemic, disaster mortality has come down. On the other hand, the number of those directly or indirectly affected have increased. And in 2023, the seven targets and its status will be confirmed. And for 2030, what are the issues and uh, what kind of lessons need to be shared? And in the remaining seven years, there needs to be political commitment to reinforce action and uh, uh, intermediate review is to be conducted in 2023. The Sendai framework has to be realized uh, through the united action of all, that is the whole of society. And therefore, this intermediate review is uh, through the participation of all. And therefore, I hope that all the Japanese stakeholders, uh, that is the government and also all the other stakeholders uh, will actively participate in this intermediate review. If we cannot uh, reduce the uh, disasters, uh, uh, the attainment of SDGs will be impossible. SDG 1, no poverty. Every year, the reality is that 26 million people fall into poverty because of disasters. And then SDG 8, which is the economic growth. The economic loss from disasters is as much as 520 billion yen each year. And these are pre-COVID numbers. So as you see on the slide, the Sendai framework attainment is relevant to all 17 SDGs. And also, as you see on the slide, what is important, and I would like to repeat, is the disaster reduction needs to be invested in. And uh, investment means uh, international cooperation 
operation and national budget and also the private sector investment and private funds that is uh, uh, the infrastructure with resilience uh, majority of the infrastructure uh, is to be uh, provided by the private sector and therefore the infrastructure development by the private sector has to have resilience at the core otherwise the disaster management uh, will not hold and so how is this to be realized there needs to be information disclosure becoming mandatory and at the same time uh, uh, direction towards resilience is where money should flow in other words there should be incentive through the tax uh, regime that's very important already in the world of the climate change uh, this is quite uh, progressing and uh, there's also the esg investment uh, as we say uh, environment uh, society governance uh, projects uh, that contribute to this is uh, being recognized by the uh, uh, private sector and therefore in the world of resilience uh, a similar concept is to expand that is what is hoped for however what is there is something that is difficult that is uh, disaster reduction disaster prevention and the adaptation to climate change the indicators have not been established as yet so uh, the success of the countermeasures uh, meaning is that uh, a disaster does not uh, become huge and uh, there are lives uh, saved and uh, damages uh, lessened. So how are you going to evaluate the damage that has not occurred? How is that to be quantified? That uh, task is still not overcome. And uh, with regards to the increased uh, investment, I think this is one obstacle. Next, please. So in the past, uh, there were three uh, UN World Conferences on Disaster Risk Reduction, Yokohama in 1995, 2005, Kobe, Sendai 2015, all hosted by Japan. And the international dis disaster management agenda has been progressed through the collaboration of the UN and Japan. And uh, Japan uh, uh, has been working for resilience in the wake of many large scale disasters, and it's been highly evaluated in the world. That is, uh, there are building standards system and the construction of resilient infrastructure, the hardware aspects, and also there is the disaster countermeasures basic law, which uh, stipulate the disaster measures. And also there's the Central Disaster Prevention Council and the uh, municipalities uh, prevention council. So multiple stakeholders are involved in the setting of the comprehensive strategies and plan. Also, every time a disaster is experienced, the lessons are learned and leads to revisions and improvements. Every year, the white paper on disaster management is published and updated. Information is disclosed to the public. Now, these uh, uh, efforts may sound a uh, matter of fact, but uh, it is a model for the world and also uh, the academic research, the disaster management technology, dissemination of disaster management education is also known. And what is expected further of Japan is uh, not just the disaster, the, the past earthquakes and tsunami, which will uh, occur in, again in the future, but also to the present global disaster trends, that is those uh, disasters related to climate change and uh, those uh, areas such as pandemics, which will occur again uh, for sure in the future. Now in Japan, in recent years, uh, climate change related disasters have led to many lives lost and major economic losses. And uh, people in the world are surprised that uh, even Japan cannot respond uh, to this kind of uh, disaster, meaning that there's an acceleration in the climate change. And uh, going forward, how is Japan going to reinforce the disaster management measures? That is what the world is looking at. And therefore, uh, climate change is uh, threatening the people of the world. But unfortunately, uh, there is... Uh, no, not enough solidarity among the people of the world. And as a result, uh, there is also a red light flashing regarding the attainment of SDGs. 
that the theme of this year's International Day for the Disaster Risk Reduction is uh, international cooperation. And uh, Japan has played uh, one of the few countries that has played a leading a role in this field. And so uh, I would appreciate Japan's long years of international cooperation in the field of disaster management, and also sincerely hope that Japan will continue to firmly lead the disaster management efforts in the international community. Uh, and uh, with uh, this sincere hope, I would like to close my remarks, and I look forward to hearing what the panelists have to say. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Ms. Story. Despite uh, limitation on time, your presentation has been quite comprehensive, and uh, she will join us in a panel discussion. And from now on, I'd like to hand over the microphone to Ms. Nemoto of International Information Center, uh, UN Information Center, rather, to be the moderator. Good afternoon. After October 13th, IDDR, and as we anticipate COP26 and the December 5th uh, World Tsunami Day, the whole of society approach is emphasized in this uh, webinar, and I'd like to express my appreciation to the sponsors. We heard from Ms. Mizutori about the disaster prevention, disaster risk reduction, and uh, what we should consider from now on. Uh, we'd like to hear the views from panelists who represent multi-stakeholders, and also would like to take questions uh, from the audience as well. Uh, please note that there is the, uh, the chat function for Q&A. If you have any questions, you can write down questions uh, there, and then, they will be introduced among the panelists today on behalf of the government of Japan. We have with us Mr. Kei Ichihara, Deputy Assistant Minister, uh, uh, Deputy Director General for Global Issues of Minister of Foreign Affairs. And from Maldives, that stands in the forefront of disaster prevention. The, his, uh, the Excellency Ambassador Ibrahim Yavais of Maldives, and Ms. Kazuko Kori, the mayor of Sendai City. And as uh, an expert, we also have Professor Miki O Ishiwatari at the University of Tokyo. And then also we will invite comments from Ms. Mizutori uh, to uh, be engaged in productive discussion in the world of United Nations. Uh, from Sendai to New York after 2015, and finally to Paris. And that's uh, the expression that we often hear, that is Sendai framework was established in Sendai in 2015, and then the SDGs that were adopted in, at UN General Assembly uh, in September, and Paris Agreement on Climate Change, those three have to be promoted as one unit uh, that's what is meant in that phrase. And as Ms. Ms. Tori emphasized, they, they, those concerns should not work separately, staying in silo, rather the whole society have to be mobilized uh, to work on effective measures. That's what we'd like to hear from you as to how to go about it in the panel discussion. So first, I'd like to hear from Mr. K. Ichihara of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I'd like to limit your remarks to seven minutes in the first round, so please be aware of the time limitation. Now over to you, Mr. Hara. Thank you, Ms. Nemoto. And this year, it's a decade since the Great East Japan earthquake, so it is a landmark year, and representing the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I appreciate being allowed to speak. 
we heard from Ms. Mistori about the present situation and the efforts of the uh, international community, and uh, she gave a, a very uh, detailed report. And I'd like to talk about uh, what is uh, the view of Japan in promoting international cooperation, SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, what is the relationship with SDGs, and also I'd like to talk about uh, the activities centering around the United Nations. Now, uh, the scope of the disaster is very broad. There's pandemics, there's also the man-made uh, uh, incidents. But today, I'd um, mostly like to talk about the natural disasters, earthquakes, and typhoons. And first, uh, with regards to disaster management in Japan, this is the basic way of thinking. In terms of the Japanese history, we see uh, volcanic eruptions, typhoon, earthquakes. So many, it's been a history of battling many natural disasters. And from the old times, uh, we have had uh, the flood control and uh, not just dealing with the a uh, disaster on hand, also uh, investment uh, from uh, the um, uh, daily times. And it's not just about uh, human lives, but also uh, the efforts for development are robbed by disasters. We are trying to eliminate the poverty and uh, realize sustainable development. And in order to do so, each uh, person has to be protected from uh, disasters. In other words, this has to do with human security so that uh, from uh, on the uh, peacetime, uh, we need to deal with this. And we have the knowledge and uh, the uh, technology accumulated over many years. Therefore, we can uh, have international cooperation and disasters to developing uh, countries. And uh, this way of thinking is natural in Japan you may think, but uh, uh, in the international community, it has been a uh, response after the fact. In other words, uh, in uh, areas where there are very few large scale disasters, then you support the reconstruction and uh, uh, rely on insurance payments. However, earthquakes, tsunami, um, and every year there are typhoons and cyclones in Asia. So in a such a region, the exposed the construction is not enough because uh, that means that uh, you cannot uh, escape from poverty and you will fall into a, a vicious cycle. In other words, uh, it has to be a development uh, agenda. And uh, we have been talking about uh, 2015 March uh, in Sendai, the Third World Conference on Natural Disaster Reduction took place. And in 1994, the first conference was held in Yokohama. And in 2005, in Hyogo Prefecture, the second uh, conference was hosted. And there have been uh, tenacious discussions with various countries. As a result, we have come up with guidelines, the Sendai framework, and uh, Japan's uh, emphasis, uh, that is the mainstreaming of disasters, and also investment in the investment before disasters also build back better. These uh, way of thinking have been incorporated. The Sendai framework is until 2030, uh, that is the mortality and economic loss is to be greatly reduced. That is uh, the objective. However, these objectives and in the same year in 2015, the 2030 agenda was adopted, that is the SDGs, and there is 11.5, uh, and uh, that means that uh, the disaster management is uh, uh, indispensable, and uh, UNDRR, led by Ms. Mistori, uh, is uh, promoting the implementation of the Sendai framework, and uh, we are actively supporting the UNDRR's activities also in the uh, general assembly of uh, 2015, uh, there was the adoption of uh, November 5th as the World Tsunami Awareness Day. Uh, this is uh, in the Edo period. Uh, there was a tsunami and uh, the a villager uh, put fire to the stack of straw, which he had uh, been uh, uh, 
uh, growing and uh, he thereby uh, let other people know. So this World Tsunami Awareness Day for uh, the Enlightenment, UNDP and through you, UNITAR, uh, and uh, 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 we will hear about the uh, Maldives from uh, Ambassador Ruiz. And so there is uh, the uh, vacation drills in schools and training, which is being held every year in order to uh, support the tsunami uh, prevention efforts. And on a bilateral basis, uh, there has been the active uh, cooperation that is at the third uh, uh, World Conference on Natural Disaster Reduction. Uh, there was the talk about uh, $4 billion of uh, cooperation in four years to uh, for the uh, 40,000 people, human resource development, that is known as the Sendai Cooperation Initiative for Disaster Risk Reduction. In 2018, this was a and in 2019, the phase two appeared, that is, uh, the, in the four years from 2019 to 2022, there will be uh, uh, the support to at least 5 million uh, people, and uh, the support is ongoing. Let me introduce some uh, concrete examples, that is, uh, this is uh, technological cooperation of JICA, for example, in the Metro Manila in Philippines. Uh, this is uh, with regards to the uh, flood control, river improvement. Uh, support and also in uh, Thailand, uh, the metro was able to uh, continue to operate despite the flooding in 2011. And there's also in the Philippines, uh, the Memorial Hospital, which was built. These are the support in terms of hardware. And also uh, there is the risk evaluation, hazard map uh, preparation and uh, human resource development, uh, which are software aspects which are being supported. And uh, today, uh, we have the mayor of Sendai City, and at the uh, earthquake site, uh, there have been about uh, 5,000 uh, trainees uh, which have been accepted, and also uh, municipalities and private sector companies in Japan are working uh, to share the reconstruction experience with the developing countries. Finally, I'd like to talk about the relationship with climate change, that is, the countries of the world uh, have uh, to uh, prepare for the unknown levels of disasters. And at the G7 summit this year, uh, we uh, indicated that uh, in the five years to 2025, there will be uh, 6.5 trillion yen of support by government and private sector for uh, climate change, especially to the vulnerable countries. Uh, there will be, for example, the collapsible wind power generation facility support and uh, the impact of uh, climate change will be considered. And there is also the uh, rising of sea level and storm surges and uh, uh, schools and hospitals are acting as evacuation sites and they must be reinforced. And uh, that would uh, uh, be uh, the efforts to reduce uh, the losses in human lives and economy. Also, the pandemic uh, is expanding and uh, there is uh, the response to the complex uh, types of uh, disasters, which is a new challenge and uh, the philosophy of SDGs to leave no one behind and realize a resilient world. And to do so, Japan is having the uh, close cooperation with various countries and international institutions. I'm sorry uh, to speak uh, this long. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Hawa. Mr. Hawa, besides responses to earthquakes, in the case of climate related disasters and or increasing its intensity and complex disasters that we experience in view of that the priority and political agenda seems to be shifted more toward the natural disaster or the disasters uh, in general and uh, what do you think as we heard from Ms. Smith's story earlier, disaster management should not be uh, taken up uh, just on its own. Rather, it should be uh, viewed in relationship with climate change and SDGs, in other words, as a trinity. And uh, that is how we need to deal with it. If it's just disasters that is taken up, then I think that it will not be as effective. 
Therefore, in that sense, Japan in the past have uh, had active cooperation in the field of disaster management and also in the field of climate change, there have been active support provided. So uh, I would say that as uh, uh, Ms. Nemoto said, it will help to alleviate uh, silos and uh, we will be able to uh, act in a uh, transdisciplinary uh, cross-sectional way. Thank you very much. And now I would like to ask Ambassador Extraordinary Plenipotentiary of the Republic of Maldives to Japan, Ambassador Ibrahim Uves. And uh, in 2018, I visited the Maldives and uh, support from Japan, UN initiatives and climate change impact. Well, I was able to view and inspect uh, what is happening in the front lines and therefore the fact that we can hear from Ambassador today, we are very uh, fortunate. Ambassador, please. Thank you very much for this opportunity uh, to discuss this important topic. A uh, quick key question for uh, that this year's disaster uh, day raises is whether international cooperation to implement national disaster plans is supported adequate, adequately and sustainably through external resources. I would like to highlight here the excellent cooperation between the Maldives and Japan in DRR. Japan has been the largest contributor to disaster risk reduction in Maldives since the late 1980s. But I'll first briefly explain the disaster risks in Maldives. We share several common features with uh, our fellow small island states, but a few like ours face a serious situation due to the lower line nature of our islands. As you know, Maldives is an Indian Ocean a nation with about 1,200 islands that are widely dispersed. We experience monsoonal weather, which can bring heavy rains, but also drought on occasion. There is some risk of earthquakes. For example, a 2013 earthquake caused some damage in the southern atolls. The Sumatra subduction zone to, the, to our east brings the highest risk of tsunamis, including the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. Our main concern has been flooding. Flooding risk is comparatively different for our islands because on average, their highest point is 1.5 meters above sea level. We don't have high ground to move to or evacuate to. Heavy rains, storm surges, uh, tidal waves, and sea level rise increase this exposure. The frequency of flooding has increased over the past few years with 90% of the islands now experiencing flooding annually. Our safety is tied to the coral reefs that naturally protect our islands. Anything that damages corals in increases disaster loss. Man-made hazards such as ocean pollution, ocean acidification, coral bleaching, and the effects of climate change such as sea level rise are especially worrying to us. In fact, 97% of our islands report shoreline erosion now, and the situation is severe in 64% of the islands. The problem is complex uh, because our population is widely dispersed across small remote islands. We are also heavily dependent on imports and tourist arrivals. When a disaster strike, this significantly uh, reduces our ability to respond. A 2004 tsunami is well known for its devastating effects in the region. In the Maldives, it caused several damage to coastlines, uh, property, and our national income as well. This perhaps sums up the principal problems that our disaster management authorities are trying to solve. But climate change means our problems have an international origin and need international cooperation. This is why after storms, storm surges uh, severely damaged our capital in 1987, the Maldivian government started voicing these concerns and requested support at international forums. Uh, Japan was the only country to respond uh, with a sustainable solution, a seawall that protects our capital to this day. Uh, the project began in 1988 and was fully completed in the early 2000s. This meant the capital withstood uh, the serious damage during the 2004 tsunami. Uh, we are grateful that Japan recognizes Maldives' uh, vulnerability to climate change and also takes into consideration the importance of diversifying Maldivian economy for resilience. 
in its bilateral uh, cooperation approach. Cooperation, particularly covering aspects of DRR, has increased in recent years. I'll mention a few examples. A project underway with JICA Assistance will introduce a Japan's digital terrestrial television broadcasting system covering all of our islands. It aims to reduce the information gap among our islands. It will also upgrade the existing EWS uh, with a segment that sends signals to mobile devices. Uh, in the past few years, we have also received several grants from uh, Japan targeted for DRR, including firefighting uh, assets and equipments, emergency response equipment, and maritime pollution prevention assets and equipment. Uh, capacity building programs have also been conducted with Japanese assistance. An urgent need exists uh, to move the disaster prevention efforts across all of the islands of Maldives. In Adu Atoll in the south, for example, in at least one area, the shoreline has eroded by more than 20 meters. A JICA project approved for funding by the Green Climate Fund uh, this July uh, will collect data on the situation and will feed to our national efforts uh, on the integrated coastal zone management. Our national efforts uh, clearly did benefit uh, when major actors like Japan are ready to support in DRR. And the Sendai framework's focus priorities and targets guides uh, such bilateral corporations very well. Our disaster management institutional framework first began as a coordinated center after the 2004 tsunami, but it has been upgraded to a national disaster management authority under a legislative framework. Its priorities and targets are aligned with the Sendai framework. Their approach is to build community-based disaster risk management that empowers, equips, and builds resilience at the local island level. I must add that Japan's assistance for DRR also reaches Maldives through UN agencies, uh, multilateral development banks such as the ADB and civil society organizations. The COVID-19 pandemic has tested our responses to disasters. Several countries, including Japan, provided health equipment, vaccines, and other assistance. Uh, our disaster management structures responded comparatively well. Uh, we were one of the first countries to reopen our borders in July last year. With regard to adequacies for adequacy for the future, like many small island states, we continue to urgently need support as climate change accelerates the frequency of disasters. Also, new challenges are emerging, like uh, groundwater salinization. Our, all our inhabited islands need infrastructure, such as uh, seawalls, but building infrastructure and capacity for all communities at once is very costly. Uh, Japan's assistance to the Maldives in DRR has been a continuing success story. Uh, for the support from Japan, the Maldivian people, and our government remain forever grateful. In 2011, when the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami struck, we were shocked to see its devastating effects. The Maldivian people donated tuna cans uh, with our ambassador at the time, distributing uh, it to the victims in Ishinomaki city. Uh, to us, it was a modest reciprocity for Japan's assistance uh, spanning many, many years. Disaster risk reduction is indeed a strong area underpinning our, uh, our bilateral cooperation, uh, tied to a concern that both countries uh, share in common. I look forward to the discussions. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. I understand that there are 1,200 small islands are distributed uh, all over Maldives. And when uh, the country consists of such small islands, uh, there is a unique uh, the difficulty in responding to disasters. What kind of challenges that are unique to Maldives, uh, given the situation with such a large number of islands? Well, the, the main issue is uh, that the islands are dispersed for a very large geographical area, and the uh, island communities are small and very remote. Uh, this is the major, major challenge that we face. And uh, providing the infrastructure and uh, capacity building needs for all of the islands uh, is, is a major and uh, complex challenge for us. And it has been uh, for since, since uh, we, we he started on this journey uh, uh, 
since our independence. I understand that your country is standing on the forefront of climate change, and we'd like to hear more from you during the discussion later on. Next, we'd like to hear from the mayor of Sandra City, um, Mayor Corey, please. Yes, uh, I am Kazuko Corey of Sendai City, and uh, thank you for the invitation to this webinar today. And from my side, I would like to talk from the perspective of a municipality, that is the uh, path to reconstruction, and also based on the lessons and experience, we are also aware of SDGs, and we are trying to create a city which uh, emphasize disaster management and the environment. Now, let me introduce our city. That is, uh, the population is about 1.09 million. And in the Tohoku area, it is the, uh, the uh, ordinance designated city. And uh, we are called a city of trees. And in, on March 11th, 2011, that is, uh, during the Great East Japan earthquake, there was an earthquake and tsunami. And in the coastal area, there was major damage and during this time we received warm support from in and outside japan i'd like to take this opportunity to express my deepest gratitude and uh, so uh, Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction was adopted at the Third World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction, started uh, from 2015. And uh, in uh, promoting reconstruction, Build Back Better and the participation of multiple stakeholders uh, was implemented and the experience and lessons are communicated so that uh, we could uh, build a disaster resistant and environmentally friendly city. Now, what is this all about is what I'd like to explain. So first of all, uh, to build this, this disaster resistant city, we have uh, the uh, green and affluent nature and using the power of nature, uh, we keep in mind uh, the lessons and experience of the earthquake so that uh, we can aim for a city with high disaster, anti-disaster capabilities. And uh, we have uh, the resilience and the ease of living and the carbon free, uh, which I'd like to introduce here. Uh, first of all, uh, the uh, threat was experienced, and so uh, we have the perspective of uh, disaster prevention and reduction in urban development. We are also using renewable uh, energy. In other words, uh, this is a uh, urban uh, development uh, with, uh, which is environmentally friendly. And you see the Minami Ugao wastewater treatment plant. And during the earthquake, there was a great uh, tsunami. And uh, it is uh, to resist such a uh, tsunami and also have uh, the enough uh, uh, power supply. Also, we are promoting uh, the shift to the inland area. And uh, that is, uh, that would uh, reduce the force of the tsunami and uh, save lives. And as a uh, municipality, we are trying to enhance the awareness of people, that is, uh, trying to cultivate stakeholders to raise uh, the uh, anti disaster capabilities. And that means that we have to keep in mind the characteristic of each uh, community and also involve uh, women in uh, capacity building. And uh, we are trying to hand down uh, the lessons, that is, uh, uh, the experience of the great earthquake and tsunami, we are the only 1 million population city to do so. And so we hope that our lessons can be utilized and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and JICA and uh, JAYA, uh, various uh, relevant uh, institutions have been involved so that uh, we can hand down uh, the lessons learned. 
From here, I would like to talk about uh, the Sendai framework and uh, SDGs, uh, that is our future action oriented action. This year, uh, we have uh, the Sendai City Basic Plan 2021 to 2030, uh, which was uh, set. And uh, we are trying to enter a new stage of uh, urban development, a new uh, city of trees, the greenest city, Sendai. One of the focus areas is a project for disaster resilient cities. In other words, that has to do with city building, uh, human capacity building, and the handing down of experience and lessons. And also, uh, we were chosen as SDG Future City, and therefore we are also aware of uh, the importance of SDGs. First of all, in uh, the uh, urban development, uh, we use the environment of the city of trees. In other words, uh, this is a promotion of uh, sustainable cities, which is in harmony with uh, nature. And uh, there was the, uh, uh, the uh, forest, uh, which uh, pr protects against uh, the tsunami, and that was lost during the earthquake. And uh, along with the protection of the ecosystem, we are trying to promote multiple defense systems. Next is uh, the uh, example of the center part of the city. And uh, we try to improve the greenery in the parks and also to enhance uh, the uh, the uh, water uh, holding capacity so that it will prevent inundation. And uh, the characteristic of Sendai is that we have both uh, the uh, oceans and the mountains, and about 80% of the area is covered by green. And uh, we have to have the uh, sustainability of urban infrastructure so that we can respond to climate change. That is, uh, so-called green infrastructure is to be promoted. Next is uh, with regards to human capacity building. And from 2016, every year, we are holding a future forum for Sendai disaster management. In other words, uh, in order to hand down the experience, we have uh, exhibits and also uh, experiential type of program so that uh, each and every citizen uh, can think on his own and uh, communicate messages after uh, the decade in March 2020. 21, we had uh, heard a, a video message from uh, the special representative Ms. Ms. Story, uh, which we thank her for. And also, uh, miss, it was uh, held amidst the uh, pandemic. So we also utilized the online system and uh, we had the participation of 4,300 people. And uh, also, uh, we not only recovery and uh, the handing down of experience, as Ms. Ms. Story said, with regards to climate change and SDGs, from various perspectives, uh, we want to provide an opportunity to think about uh, disaster management. Right now, uh, we are planning for uh, March of next year when the next uh, forum will be held. Finally, uh, with regards to uh, the uh, disaster prevention, technology, and business, we want to merge uh, the three. Uh, that is, we want to promote so-called both side tech, uh, the small and medium enterprises, and research institutions are participating. And uh, uh, they are making challenge to overcome the various uh, disaster issues and on and also to commercialize uh, so that this could be a sustainable business in the future. And uh, let me introduce one example that is in the coastal area. This is a completely autonomous tsunami evacuation public information drone. And at the time of a disaster, the drone will uh, fly automatically and uh, it will have a speaker if, and it will call on the citizens to evacuate. We've already had a demonstration test so that within this fiscal year, we believe that it can be implemented. So I have been talking about uh, the uh, Sendai city aiming to be a disaster resilient and environmentally friendly city so that uh, we can promote sustainable urban development. Uh, and also we want to uh, 
rear the uh, people and the community with high awareness, and uh, we want to hand down the experience so that the disaster management will play a central role, but we also want to have efforts that will contribute to the attainment of SDGs goals. As is emphasized in the Sendai framework, we want to have uh, the resilience of society as a whole, and uh, we would like to have the participation of all stakeholders in this process. That's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. So uh, as Ms. Mead's story said, uh, disaster management should not be considered a cost, but rather investment and opportunity. It's, in other words, we need to shift our way of thinking. And uh, Mayor talked about the uh, disaster management related industries, and uh, that was very interesting. So that uh, right now, I think uh, the, uh, you are seeing more uh, of thinking in this direction. Yes, I think so. That is, uh, there's Bosai Tech, and actually we are jointly working with Fukushima Prefecture. And also there is a uh, great interest from overseas so that we are trying to do so-called matchmaking among the various uh, parties inter interested. Green infrastructure is being emphasized, not just for tsunami, but recently there's a lot of torrential rain. So uh, rain water is uh, being uh, uh, stored. Thank you very much. Now let's go on to Professor Ishiwatari. Good evening, and thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. As has been discussed already, the, my theme is about the investment into disaster management. What kind of impact can we expect? What kind of experiences that Japan gained could be shared if as a reference for the rest of the world? Let me introduce myself just briefly. I used to be with the Minister of Construction, uh, the former Minister of Construction that is now Emlet, and then I moved to JICA. And also I worked for the World Bank and also uh, I sometimes teach at the universities. And uh, first about the lessons that we learned that could be shared uh, with the rest of the world. That is Japan has been working together to build the resilient society by investment and various initiatives. That's what I'd like to discuss in several minutes. The Notori River case and the Philippines and China would be introduced. And before discussing the main theme that is investment about the importance of infrastructure, which I'm going to explain. Prior to that, I'd like to explain about the importance of the communities. In 2011, after the tsunami, well, there used to be breakwater and uh, there was uh, the warning system, and yet it all boils down to how individual could defend himself or herself and how such effort was supported by the local community. That's considered to be most important. And when I uh, turn to the JICA trainees, besides the importance of technologies and others, as in the case of Iwakiri uh, Elementary School in Sendai, uh, this is the case where the, the training session for women uh, leaders were trained for disaster management. And now talking about uh, investment, I'd like to quote exactly what Ms. Mizutori said. Well, the importance of investing in disaster risk reduction for resilience, the third priority for action in the Sendai framework is universally acknowledged and financing the investment has so far proved to be difficult. But because of the uh, shortage of data, it is rather difficult to uh, picture what it could be the benefit out of such an investment. 
And this is in the case of Natori River in Sendai City. Well, if I call it Hirose River, then you might uh, know it. Well, this is a tributary of uh, Hirose River flowing in Sendai City. And uh, this is the result of the joint study with the International Research Institute of Disaster Science of Tohoku University. The national project started from 1951. And uh, these sometimes 1 billion to 7 billion yen were spent. And even today, it is about 1 billion yen invested from 1951 and now the total came to 610 billion yen that is about the half of the budget of sendai city without that investment without the uh construction that took place at the time of typhoon number 19 in 2019 the the damage experienced along the river was rather limited but without that investment and then such wider region could have been inundated. It may be rather difficult to figure out, but uh, the Natori city toward the south and Tangajo city toward the north, such wide range could have been inundated with the damage of 350 billion yen. That is about one third of the budget that is of the Sendai city. Therefore, the benefits actually I could have amounted to 1.5 trillion yen or so, that is by constructing embankment and uh, breakwaters, uh, this much damage has been reduced. So when we try to come up with a return, it stands at 2.5, that is more than the doubled return was gained as a result of investment made. So as an investment, this is quite uh, the favorable and successful. And now, Professor Tsukahara of Kyushu University considered what if this was uh, examined in the case of uh, Japan uh, nationwide and first try to plot the flood control budget, and then try to calculate how much could have been saved as a damage. And every year, the several trillions of yen of the, uh, the damage were prevented, meaning that again, the uh, return on investment was more than two. And now this was applied to other countries, uh, the, namely China and the Philippines, uh, just because the data was available only for those two countries. In fact, in the absence of uh, the investment data, all we could collect was about China and the Philippines. China is growing so rapidly, but uh, if there was no uh, investment made uh, for disaster management, and then the damage uh, could have been also growing that much, but thanks to the investment made, uh, they increased the investment for disaster management as they grew their economy. As a result, the damage did not uh, grow as much as they invested. The, the same was seen in the case of the Philippines. However, uh, the, it went down once and then started to rise uh, because since around 2000, the Philippines started to suffer the, the damages due to the typhoon and therefore the damage soared. And uh, investment is somewhat flat. So we can conclude that because of that, the damage has grown and therefore in view of that, Philippines are increasing the investment for disaster management very rapidly. Now the question is how to secure the funding for investment. This is again the Natori River. Here, the responsibility and the the division of labor have to be considered. Well, in the case of Japan, one third is spent by the national government and one third by local communities. 
some uh, state that if the budget is uh, handed over to them, then uh, in their own responsibility, they can implement the project. And from the government point of view, if the investment is made, then the beneficiaries uh, should uh, also show their, their responsibility accordingly. And therefore, uh, because there is a limit to the budget, we have to consider the how much responsibility be borne by the local municipalities as opposed to the government. That is not only for Japan, but also for other countries like the Philippines. And uh, th this is the case of the floodgate. This was destroyed at the time of tsunami, and then it was rebuilt. And it is now operated by local people. It is rather large floodgate. And it is local operators, uh, the local people as operators, who shut the floodgate. It could be during the nighttime. And yet, that is handled by the local people. As I said, the, the local people are there uh, to help evacuation or to run uh, the shelters. So the, uh, their contribution, uh, that would be, I would say, priceless. They such an essential service as contributed by local people. Thus, the return on investment for disaster management is uh, quite uh, significant. And uh, so far, Japan has been working on this as throughout the nation. I used to visit Sendai very frequently, but recently I don't have such an opportunity to visit uh, Sendai city with other people from developing countries. And I'm looking forward to revisit Sendai in the near future. And I can receive questions and comments uh, to the address that is shown on the screen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ishiwatari. So we've heard from four panelists up to this point. And uh, first, we'd like to hear from Ms. Mistori. Thank you very much. I think that uh, everyone uh, expressed a very, very important points, so it's very difficult to summarize. First, uh, what Mr. Hara mentioned, I felt that Japan has been providing great support in the field of disaster management. And of course, uh, these are provision of funds, but also importance is human resource development, that both the central and local government, uh, there aren't enough uh, talent in the disaster management. So that uh, is very important under the Sendai framework. And also uh, from the perspective of human security, you are providing assistance and uh, uh, well, Sendai framework is uh, based on human rights. Uh, that is uh, to protect people from disaster. That is a human right. And I think that perspective is very important. And I have also heard from Ambassador Weiss about uh, a developing nation. And as Ms. Nemoto mentioned, uh, the country is in the front lines of climate change and you're uh, trying to protect the country. That means that uh, international cooperation is indispensable. And that cooperation came at an early time from Japan, and it has been conducted uh, in, uh, consistently. And uh, the ambassador mentioned the community-based uh, uh, resilience and the importance of this resilience. And even under COVID, I think this is very important. Of course, there's a central government and they are trying to raise the resilience uh, and also how to raise the resilience of the community is very important. Now, Mayor Corey, yes, uh, in 2015, uh, we were very much indebted to you. So that is the close relationship between people and uh, nature. That is, if you destroy nature, that would lead to great uh, uh, risk. And then there's also disaster reduction uh, based on nature. In other words, nature-based solutions are now a focus of attention. And uh, under the leadership of Mayor Corey, I think uh, that uh, uh, Zendai can uh, pursue both the disaster reduction and environmental friendliness and become a model for the world. And uh, Professor Ishiwatari, uh, I felt, 
specifically uh, how can investment in disaster management be effective? I think that uh, you gave very comprehensible examples. One of our jobs is, uh, important job is to share the success examples in the world. And in May of next year, the global platform, global conference will be held. And so, what the professor introduced, the uh, Natorigawa example, I would like to introduce such an example. And also, finally, uh, Mr. Ha talked about uh, Europe and uh, uh, to uh, deal with risk through insurance. And that's true. But uh, in Europe, too, uh, the floods and uh, forest fires were quite uh, great so that uh, you cannot just uh, convert risk. You do have to emphasize disaster management, and uh, that was uh, uh, emphasized by the uh, leaders of the local municipalities, such as mayors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Ishwatari, about investment made into disaster management and its benefit or return, that was quite interesting. I wonder what that kind of study is uh, pursued in various parts of the world. I have to say it's not very popular. When I write uh, the thesis or papers, uh, they are not uh, often quoted or, or referred to. One reason is because of uh, the, the shortage of data, it is rather difficult to promote such investigation. Therefore, engineering and so social science type of studies are uh, preferred over economic studies, uh, like the one that I have just introduced. The reason for asking is because the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres mentioned in conjunction with the climate change, there are three pronged messages. That is, first, climate adaptation and resilience have to be promoted and that requires more investment. I really hope that uh, studies like yours be promoted more so that uh, when they are put forward numerically, and then that would be the strong, uh, the tailwind uh, for facilitating such activities. I realize that uh, we have a wide range of uh, the audiences, uh, the some are from uh, local media. Ms. Mizutori, the role of media in disaster management, what can you say? In fact, uh, they, uh, they can play a significant role and uh, they should play even more actively for instance, in early warning system, as you may know, in Japan, the role of media is extremely important. On the other hand, on our side, before the disaster, uh, there is a role that media can play right now. World Broadcasting Federation and Asia Broadcasting Federation are involved in discussing how to go about uh, the broadcasting in face of disasters and trying to promote uh, the human resource development. Of course, the, it is important to send out message about evacuation, calling uh, out for evacuation right before the disaster and after uh, the disaster, but even before that, the media can play a role in building up resilience locally by introducing the cases of other countries that would be quite effective. Therefore, in Japan, when it comes to disaster management, media has accumulated a knowledge and experiences and hope that they would be utilized uh, globally as well. Mayor Corey, you used to work for the mass media and uh, disaster management and uh, disaster response, you are in the front lines. So, the media, uh, collaborating with media as a social infrastructure, how do you feel? Well, uh, 
the members of the media have cooperated in various ways and they are playing a very big role during the Great East Japan earthquake. A lot of information was broadcast and uh, communicated and I understand that it was a big help. And uh, municipalities have to prepare in various ways for disasters. We cannot do everything, however, meaning that uh, there has to be cooperation with various stakeholders so that the community, the region as a whole can enhance the disaster management capabilities. In that sense, uh, members of the mass media and also uh, social media. I think it is important that we use many kinds of means. Thank you very much. So there is a question from the audience and uh, this is a question to Mr. Hara of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also uh, if the ambassador could respond to. So uh, developing nations uh, uh, think that uh, there are uh, cases of O. DA and uh, with the enhanced uh, climate change uh, risks, I think there is uh, economic crisis. And the one Maldives has uh, used tourism to develop. And uh, I think uh, there are countries that are graduating from being a uh, small island developing state, but uh, there is a very difficult situation in surrounding the climate too. So uh, through ODA, perhaps uh, there should be further support provided to such countries, or uh, if it's not ODA, then what kind of cooperation uh, can be assumed and uh, it is uh, from the perspective of a, uh, a graduate of a small developing island state, so perhaps there could be a comment. Uh, Mr. Hara, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Ms. Nemoto, and thank you for uh, this question. And I think that an important point was raised. It's true that, uh, uh, well, which country should ODA be provided to? Uh, we look at per capita GDP and to what extent well, uh, if you reach a certain level, uh, then uh, you graduate from being an ODA recipient, uh, so to speak. On the other hand, as uh, uh, in, in the Maldives, uh, statistically, it is not a graduate uh, yet, but uh, the Caribbean island states, the small island states have a small population and therefore the per capita GDP, if we calculate in that way, then uh, the number might uh, become uh, just uh, a bit uh, high. And uh, so uh, it might lead to a discussion about uh, how uh, this kind of data is to be used. And as was indicated, there's the vulnerability of the small island state that and uh, we focus on that. So it's not just simply uh, you, you reach a certain number, so you're a graduate. Uh, I think uh, it should not be, that should not be the case. Even if the data, the number, or statistics meet the criteria for graduation, I believe that if it's a small uh, island developing state with vulnerable conditions, then uh, cooperation should be continued. And there are such examples, uh, therefore, uh, first, uh, with ODA, such a small vulnerable island state, even if they do have a certain level of per capita GDP, I think that the centering on the disaster management the field, uh, cooperation should be continued. And that is actually the situation. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Weiss, please. Uh, thank you very much for this question. You raise a, uh, a very valid point, and I think I would like to share the experience of uh, Maldives with respect to graduation, as well as uh, the uh, high per capita GDP that we have experienced, of course, uh, due to tourism. Uh, Maldives uh, uh, was uh, designated an LDC in the early stages of its uh, independence, and uh, uh, but during the 1970s, uh, tourism was introduced to Maldives, which uh, uh, gradually, uh, but immediately uh, saw a rapid change in our uh, per capita G uh, GDP in, uh, income. 
but uh, uh, we were uh, we have graduated from the LDC category in 2011 now, and we are designated as a middle income country. Uh, but prior to that, uh, Maldives was uh, uh, going to graduate in 2005, and that was uh, uh, delayed to 2011 following the 2004 uh, tsunami, uh, which uh, severely affected our, our, in the, uh, uh, our economy. As uh, uh, the special representative's uh, 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 comments uh, included, uh, the UNSG uh, said that nothing undermines development like a disaster. And I think we experienced that uh, firsthand uh, following the tsunami. And uh, from 2011, we had uh, a, 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 the fundamental, fundamental nature of our relationship with our development partners changed. And of course, uh, uh, we were not eligible for ODA assistance as, as we would have been uh, in, in an, an under the LDC category. And this affected our, our development as well as disaster reduction efforts to a great degree. But uh, with Japan, and uh, uh, we have uh, seen a, uh, 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 an increase in dialogue uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to with a small island developing states uh, such as uh, Maldives, uh, which fundamentally actually recognizes the vulnerability, vulnerability of uh, our, our countries uh, to disasters and uh, climate change. And this has uh, helped us uh, regain a momentum in our, our bilateral relationship with uh, Japan. And um, as I mentioned in my initial remarks, we've seen an uptick of uh, uh, assistance for especially targeted for our disaster risk reduction, I should say. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, there is a question, uh, Ms. Mizutori. In many cases, international cooperation is hampered due to the uh, US-China confrontation. What about the case of disaster uh, management? Do you see such an impact and whether there is any uh, the war over turf uh, due to the international confrontation? About the first question, fortunately, disaster management doesn't have a political nature and therefore, uh, that is because uh, this is true for any countries. They have to respond to disaster risks to protect their own people. And out of that awareness, adoption of Sendai framework was not politicized. That is a strength of disaster management agenda. And we continue to receive uh, the sizable support, not only from Japan, but also from the United States, China, South Korea, and European countries to our organization, regardless of the political system or the region, disaster management is viewed as a, new, a priority. And uh, the second question that was raised by uh, Akasaka-san, uh, who is more experienced than me in terms of international affairs, but I would say that um, although our organization is rather small, the disaster management related normative, the structures or thoughts are the ones that we are trying to develop. And at the same time, UNDP that is engaged in development efforts in various countries, we are trying to pursue closer cooperation with them. And also we work closer with uh, the UN, the, the framework of a climate change convention. And therefore in our case, we have successfully avoided the kind of uh, the, the war over turf, so to speak, over interest. On October 13th, International Day for Disaster Reduction, there was uh, the announcement made by UN DDR and uh, the IWO, the or WMO rather, uh, that uh, announced the establishment of the Center for Resilience Against Disaster. Yes, from September the 1st, we 
move to WMO building. And uh, when this was first suggested, Secretary General Chalice of WMO stated that uh, we are not uh, just a tenant of the building, but rather these are two organizations that are in charge of two important items, climate and disaster, and therefore we should work together to realize resilience for their climate and for disaster in general and should promote uh, joint studies. And this center was established as a result, and uh, this was just started last week. Much is going to be developed from now, but uh, the one characteristics is that whether it is private or public, the, the various organizations and stakeholders are going to join us from both public and private sectors. And we are aiming for the spreading the results of those studies. We know that uh, uh, there the are silos everywhere trying to defend uh, their own agenda and sometimes they turn blind eyes uh, to the priority of other organizations and that is true for United Nations organizations, but it is no longer the time that we can stay in silo. Center of Excellence for Resilience, Climate Resilience was created because of such a recognition. And I sincerely hope that uh, Japanese organizations, research institutes as well, would join us in this initiative. So the initiatives uh, discussed today, I believe that uh, is going to be incorporated in the center's discussions and reports. Is that right? Yes, that's right. That's what we are aiming for. So COP26, it will start from October 31st. And uh, special representative, you are going to attend? Yes. I am uh, scheduled to attend and it is being held amidst the pandemic, but uh, it is expected to be of the largest uh, scale. And uh, we couldn't hold COP last year. So five years after Paris Accord, uh, to what extent has the response to uh, climate change uh, proceeded? Well, uh, we feel, as uh, Ms. Nemoto mentioned, that uh, disaster management and climate change and adaptation measures, how can we uh, link uh, the three together and promote it, and how can we fund it? Uh, that means that uh, there has to be enlightenment and discussion with various uh, people, and that's why I'm going to Glasgow. Thank you very much. Well, I believe our time is up. And uh, finally, perhaps the, each of the panelists uh, would like to say one message uh, for the audience, uh, starting with Mr. Hara. So uh, thank you for the uh, very precious opportunity to speak today about the Japanese government's efforts. And uh, I think that this is a very important theme, also the relationship with climate change and uh, SDGs. Uh, I would like to keep that in mind and in the field of disaster management to lead uh, the initiatives of the world. Thank you very much. And uh, Ambassador Weiss, please. Thank you very much once again. And um, this verb, uh, I'm really glad to uh, be part of this uh, uh, discussion. Uh, I was very impressed by uh, the, uh, uh, the information that was shared, especially the uh, uh, Sendai story, uh, uh, which I heard. Uh, I believe that uh, the work is, has to be done at the uh, uh, local level uh, for, for us to move forward uh, with this uh, a, a big task, disaster risk, risk reduction, climate change, uh, sea level rise, these issues are, are very important to us to work uh, through local level engagement. And I think uh, moving forward, uh, uh, th this is the way to go. And uh, uh, thank you once again for, for this great opportunity. Ms. Corey, please.
Mayor, if you could uh, give us one final message. Thank you very much. And uh, I was given a very good opportunity. Disaster management and climate change and SDGs. Uh, basically, I feel that they are one and the same. That means uh, uh, each person's uh, action is important, but also not just government and municipalities and not just uh, individuals and companies. I think that a world as a whole has to uh, become uh, uh, enabled. And uh, uh, UNDRR and uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I think uh, uh, we would like to collaborate with various sectors and take uh, various opportunities so that our experience and uh, lessons can be communicated to the world to contribute to disaster management. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, Professor Ishibatari, thank you very much once again for inviting me. I also learned a lot and I really enjoyed the discussion. I didn't have a time to touch on the following. Japan has a long history of disaster management. For instance, uh, the local groups were formed to fight against fire and the flood and also the uh, the tree planting to prevent or reduce risks coming from disasters. In fact, not only hardware, but also software as a knowledge and experience for disaster management have been accumulated over years. That's what Japan can share with the rest of the world. And that is a role that Japan should play. Thank you very much once again. Now, Ms. Ms. Tori, please. Next year in May, in Bali, in Indonesia, Global Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction is going to meet there. there. We want to invite all the stakeholders from member states to renew our commitment for implementation of Sendai framework and share the experience as well as the knowledges that we can learn from each other. We are looking forward to seeing you there in Bali next year. I'm sorry that I was not good at time management. I received so many questions, but we could not uh, to take up all of them. I apologize for those questions that were not discussed, but listening to discussion, I felt I think globally, act locally as exactly the case. When various stakeholders are the they're linked with each other, and when they are out of the silos, then we can expect the productive uh, the result and progress. Well, 10 years since uh, the great East Japan earthquake, and hope that you would continue to uh, maintain the awareness about the disaster management. And now over to you, Ms. Ichikawa, International Cooperation for Disaster Management Experience, as well as role of Japan, among others were discussed and hope that uh, this webinar helped you to deepen understanding on those topics. I'd like to express my appreciation on behalf of JIIA uh, to co-sponsors as well as panelists. And more than that, uh, thank you very much for your interest on the part of the audience. The webinar today is going to be introduced on the website of JIIA. It is going to be uploaded on the JIIA website. You can refresh your uh, memory or you uh, can uh, see that uh, if you miss it. And as an advertisement, the recent report by Professor Ishwatari, as well as uh, those reports related to webinar today and are introduced on webinar uh, on the JIIA website together with the information about the future webinars. If you're interested in those topics, hope that you would come and visit the website of JIIA. Once again, thank you very much for your contribution to the panelists, co-sponsors, and their audience. Interpreters and engineers, thank you very much for your contribution. And with this, I'd like to bring an end to this webinar. Thank you very much.